Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Preeti Sharma, your Pathology and Microbiology faculty at Prep Ladder, and I have the honor of introducing Dr. Shloka, who's got rank 3 in the recently conducted INI set May 2025. So congratulations, Dr. Shloka, from the entire team of Prep Ladder. How are you feeling? How many times have you checked your result? Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah, it, it took several times for it to sink in, actually. I'm sure. I'm very sure. So, um, I mean, by now, I'm sure it's been a couple of hours since the results have been declared. You must have told your family, friends. How is the reaction? Were, was everyone expecting this or has this come like a surprise to everyone? Uh, everyone except me was actually expecting this. I'm sure. So, yeah. But uh, everyone got overwhelmed, kind of like everyone was expecting I would do well, but this well was a surprise. Right. A single digit rank, that to rank three. I mean, that just tells us that I'm not even going to ask you the question that how much have you studied? Because that goes without stay, saying that, you know, you work really hard. Neither am I going to ask you how were you studying through the entire four profs? Because, of course, you have been one of the brilliant students of your batches. So I'm going to focus more on the last year because just before the session, Dr. Shloka was telling me that this is her first attempt. She's cracked this alongside her internship. So I'm going to focus on your strategy during the internship. So let me start from the internship phase and ask you that uh, if you have to go back as a student and start preparing today for this exam main videos versus rapid revision what would you choose how would you balance that out ma'am i think main videos uh, covering all subjects main videos in one year i think uh, even if i'm able to do that i won't be able to revise them right. so i think the smartest strategy is to go through revision videos twice or thrice rather than doing the main videos once the retention will be more i guess with that strategy Perfect. And how should a student be integrating this with the QBank and how are you proceeding with the QBank? Uh, along with the videos, I think it, it serves as a kind of a self-assessment tool. Otherwise, just passively learning through the videos or just passively reading the notes. I think active recall through a QBank would be much more effective rather than just reading it through. So I think you should do it along with your videos and notes. Right. So were you giving, uh, were you solving the QBank subject wise or were you more into custom modules during your internship? During internship, I preferred custom modules. Yes, because okay. I can tailor them to my need, the subjects that I like. Perfect. I think the tags and the custom module definitely help students in assessing a mixed bag of questions. But someone who's starting off, you would you suggest them to go subject wise or topic wise? Initially, I guess if you just have one year to prepare, then initial six months, you can try to complete as much as QBank as you want. Later on, you can select tags as per PYK. If you're preparing for INSA, just to just select the INSA tags. And like you have to do a focus preparation if you have less amount of time left. Yes, correct. Uh, so, you know, I want to ask you a question, which as a faculty, I tend to be asked a lot. And today I'm going to ask it to you. Uh, what was your frequency of grant tests and how were you analyzing the grant test? Uh, until uh, late final year and starting of internship, I used to give it every 15 days. Then I started giving it weekly. And in the last two to three months, I increased the frequency to around two per week. Okay, that's great. So in terms of the analysis, were you, uh, you know, analyzing the correct and incorrects on the same day or did you divide it over the coming week? Yeah. No, no, no. I never used to divide it. Uh, as soon as possible, I used to review it as soon as I saw the result. Especially, I would analyze the wrong ones and the skipped ones on the spot, even if I don't have time. And that just takes around one hour, half an hour, one hour. And uh, also, you have to review the corrects as well. But it's okay if you do it in, on the same day or the next day. But don't stretch it out over, let's say, a week or something. That will take up a lot of time. And then you'll tend to forget the questions, the logic by which you attempted them in the first place. Right. So now that we're talking about GTs, did you also appear for the champions exam that was conducted by Prep Ladder? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So how was your uh, performance in that? How did you think that was it similar to the final exam or was it different? How was your score and rank in the same? Yes, yes ma'am. It was uh, similar to the final exam. And even in that, I got a rank within the top 10. It was uh, 8 or 9, I think. Oh, nice. And uh, yes, the level of difficulty definitely simulated the real exam because uh, even that exam and the to uh, final I total direct simple questions to the one that actually needed conceptual applications. 
So except for the multiple correct option stuff, mm-hmm. that was not actually predicted by anyone that will get so many questions like that. The level of questions was similar to that. So I think over the past few sessions, we have seen those multiple correct ones taking a rise in INI and, set and match the followings coming up more. So I think students in the future can also be prepared for it. Uh, one more thing that uh, you are now in the era of digital abundance, where you have so many platforms, so many free resources also over YouTube. So something called FOMO definitely kicks in the students because everyone around them is studying from different sources. Did you suffer from FOMO? If yes, how did you beat that? Uh, if you have FOMO, I think you can definitely give tests from uh, different platforms, but uh, you can't go for reading notes of every single faculty because every faculty has done their hard work and compiled the best they can in the one notes. So if you just religiously follow any one of the sources for reading and then you can assess yourself once or twice, not, not much. Otherwise, you'll just keep on losing confidence. So one or two tests here and there is fine, but otherwise just leave FOMO aside. Right. So in a nutshell, uh, what you would want to say is that notes should be of a single source, but grand tests, definitely you should attempt of multiple platforms to have a variety of questions coming your way. Variety of questions plus uh, we tend to have seen the images of only one source and it's not like the final exam will give you the same images. So yeah, you can uh, practice different questions, no harm in that. I think that's golden advice because image-based questions, especially for subjects like pathology, micro, radiology, you know, these students tend to get confused in these images rather than Googling random photos over the net. It's better that you attempt GTs of multiple platforms and get exposed to that variety on the spot. I think that's some golden advice that Dr. Shloka has given us and I'm sure the juniors are going to benefit from it. But uh, since this is entirely your day, Dr. Shloka, any gratitude message from, for all the people who've stood by you in this entire journey yes ma'am uh, it's never a one-man army thing it's always a teamwork and i'm really really grateful to all my teachers my family and friends for helping me throughout this journey it was definitely not an easy one but they really made it manageable for me no, and uh, i'm so glad that you had a strong support system because i strongly believe so that without that it is impossible to achieve anything in life and Uh, Before this session, we were also talking about how you did this alongside your internship. I'm sure that must not have been a very light internship from the college that you come from. Yeah, Uh, ma'am. It was a bit hectic, but uh, you can take out time if you want to, like after duties, before duty, you have to steal those hours in order to fulfill your dreams. So that is a must. So just before we end this session, I would want you to elaborate on that a little because we have a lot of interns preparing for the future exams. And that's a question that I as a faculty get that how should their scheduling or strategy be during their internship? Did you divide your subjects as per the heavy and light internships that you had? Yes, actually, I had my own timetable about what subjects to study. I was targeting to at least complete one reading in the uh, initial few months. And then I I just had the later uh, the latter part of this year for revision of those subjects like not the entire thing I could read the revision notes I could do the PYQ so I kept the last three months for revision and PYQ solely for that uh, before that I completed reading the main notes uh, once or twice for all subjects and for some subjects the volatile ones like OBGY anesthesia which require a lot of cramming stuff I kept it uh, more number of readings for that and as far as the internship is concerned. Like if you have a hectic day, like if you have a 12 hour emergency, don't stretch yourself much, uh, much. So you can just do your duty and get a good night's sleep. Wake up early tomorrow morning to cover whatever the time you lost. And even during internship, I think during your duty as you can definitely solve uh, Q bank questions, PYQ. So I think that is manageable. That is not something. And plus, if you have less time after duty, I think that calls for a more uh, focused revision because you know you have less amount of time left. So you have to concentrate. So just set small targets for yourself and I think you can do it. Perfect. So I think there are some golden pieces of advice that students have got from Dr. Shloka today. And as a take home message and a summary, I think the first most important thing that she's told us as a medical student, you will have to steal time. No one's going to give you time in abundance. You'll have to just steal time from whatever you get during your internship. Secondly, I think the best advice that she's given us is to keep a single resource for all the subjects, at least in terms of your theory and GTs, you can definitely do from multiple platforms. And thirdly, the grand test, like she did and she would advise and so would I, that the incorrect should be analyzed the same day. Ideally, the entire grand test, but if not possible, at least the ones that you're getting wrong 
wrong should be done on the same day and then you can obviously prioritize and do the correct ones later on so i think dr shloka all the students going forward are definitely going to uh, you know really benefit from this advice that you've given them and thank you so much from the entire team of prep ladder to share this journey of yours with us and let us also be a part of this in some way wishing you all the very best one last question has the branch been decided or are you still uh, in a dilemma no i'm still considering my options but yeah i'll decide soon okay sure so we will uh, look out for uh, what dr shloka opts for eventually but i think today is the day to celebrate this amazing rank of rank 3 and wishing you all the very best for the future god bless you thank you so much ma'am thank you